Billy, you so crazy. Yo, what's crack? It was Bracken. It's your boy, Billy, you so crazy. And we back, and we back, and we back, and we back with another one. Y'all read the title. Sure, I know what we're doing, man. This is 10 times cartoon saw into the future and called it right, and 10 times they were wrong. All right, so this is going to be interesting, y'all, especially with what we got going on today. If you are new to this channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Comment down below what you want to see me react to next. Follow me on all my social media links are right there. Send me a message on any one of those, and I get back with you as soon as possible. Um, if there's a request you want done a little bit quicker, I do have a Patreon link in the description, so feel free. No pressure. You don't have to. You can still leave it in the comment section. I get to it all the same. But let's just get straight to this 10 times cartoon song to the future and called it right. And then the 10 times that they were wrong for now, because they could just be wrong for right now, but they can excuse me, most definitely be calling it for later. It's not happening yet, or it hasn't happened yet. And I hope that it never does, but you know, whatever. Let's just, let's get into it. I believe I am psychic. My first prediction, I am either gonna fly or ruin that family's picnic. Hey, you've ruined our picnic. Psychic. <laughs> Suck it. Oh. Um. To be honest, that could have been a message right there. You know what I'm saying? It could be, they, they plan everything. You know what I'm saying? This couldn't be no, oh, it just came out of nowhere. They probably knew the whole time. It could have been a hidden message in that. They knew what they was doing. Many of Conspiracy us watch theorists. cartoons as a way to escape the real world, but it's always right there, waiting for us the moment Netflix interrupts us to ask if we're still watching. Man, for Some real. animated shows you know, even feature crap. real world events and situations which sometimes get a little bit too close to reality for comfort. Today, we'll be talking about some scenes from your favorite cartoons that ended up being rather prophetic in hindsight, but even though mm -hmm. Homer Simpson may have predicted a major scientific event, sometimes even our favorite cartoons have gotten things wrong. I have Sherlock no Holmes? A two liter bottle of Shasta and my all rush mixtape. Let's <laughs> rock. Not my all rush. Homer Simpson isn't the smartest guy around, and we all know that he's woefully unqualified for pretty much anything that doesn't involve eating donuts. So it's kind of crazy that he works at a nuclear power plant, and if things go wrong, it could spell disaster for way more than just the humble town of Springfield. But maybe True. Homer's smarter than we give him credit for, especially since he managed to figure out something that eluded actual scientists for quite some time. Who would have guessed that Homer J. Simpson would solve the mass of the Higgs boson 14 years before the European Organization for Nuclear Research could do so? What? In the Wizard of Evergreen Terrace, Homer decides to try his hand at inventing. We have a feeling that he would have been sent home from Shark Tank empty-handed with inventions <laughs> like an electric hammer and for a those reasons, that delivers blasts I'm out. Shark Tank is my stuff. I love Shark Tank. Now you're ready for a night on the town. <gasps> but he also calculated the mass of the Higgs boson to be 775 giga electron volts, or GeV. According to Dr. Simon Singh, author of The Simpsons and Their Mathematical Secrets, that figure is surprisingly similar to the actual 125 GeV estimate made by CERN over a decade later in 2012. The writing team behind The Simpsons contains a surprising number of mathematicians, and the author of that formula was one of them. After his stint on The Simpsons, David X. Cohen became the head writer and executive producer of Futurama, another show that managed to predict the future more than that once. That makes sense. Seeing futuristic technology on Futurama, Futurama isn't exactly funny. surprising, but it's not the only show to feature devices that seemed advanced for the time. Let's take a look back at the classic cartoon, Inspector Gadget. Many of the gadgets we saw used by the inspector and his allies look an awful lot like the technology we now take for granted. Just look at the Gadget Mobile, which featured an autopilot mode and self-parking abilities. This was oh, unheard that's a Tesla. of at the time, but now it's becoming yep, more and more that's a Tesla. Then there's Penny's computer book which looks an awful lot like early versions of laptop computers which weren't released for years after penny debuted this tech it even had a predictive text feature since it assumed what she was searching for after a minimal data input it also featured digital maps comparable to modern day google maps or satellite navigation systems she also had a digital camera like device which she hooked up to the computer book in order to take photos Penny was always a step or 12 ahead of her uncle, but apparently she was ahead of her time by our standards as well. 
I mean, wait a minute. But they was planning Is it. The Simpsons way more science savvy than we originally thought. Sure, there are lots of jokes about Homer's eating habits and Bart's prank phone calls, but there are also some pretty clever moments hidden in there. It's even possible that the show managed to predict the spread of the coronavirus 27 years ago. Huh? Yes, many of us were stunned to discover that our local stores that, had sold out of toilet paper and disinfectant wipes, but maybe we should have been paying closer attention to the Simpsons lesson on how things like this can spread. In the episode Marge in Chains, Springfield is hit by the fictional Osaka, Osaka flu. The source of the illness was a Japanese factory worker who coughed into a box before sending it over to the United States where it was opened by Homer Simpson. That's yes, kind of creepy. I ain't even gonna hold you. That's kind of creepy. An illness originating in a foreign <laughs> country and making its way to the U.S. But it's not as major of a prediction as some people think. There are edited images of the episode online, which make it seem as though it dealt with coronavirus specifically. But rest assured, the episode only showed the transmission of the Osaka flu, and it's not a real thing. At least, not yet. It better not be. The Simpsons take <laughs> place in modern times, but shows like Futurama occur in the distant future. So seeing pieces of futuristic technology is to be expected. The show covers all of the classic sci-fi bases like flying cars, talking robots and humans, colonizing other planets. But even though the show takes place about a thousand years into the future, it's been able to predict events that happened much sooner than that. In the episode, The Lesser of Two Evils, the Planet Express crew visits a place called Pastorama, which is a historical theme park with quite a few inaccuracies. Okay, so maybe cowboys didn't hunt woolly mammoths, but we did end up getting a ninth Star Wars movie like this theater marquee predicted. It was called The Rise of Skywalker and Yoda's sadly Bar not Yoda's Bar Mitzvah. But That's still, actually funny. Episode came that is out, actually we were funny. Only up to The Phantom Menace, which did not go over well with many fans. The idea of making the franchise extending to nine episodes seemed crazy, but apparently it was just crazy enough to happen. And while we haven't seen Yoda's Bar Mitzvah yet, we did meet another member of his mysterious species in The Mandalorian. Baby Yoda. It's not exactly a secret that Disney that one is, is not, an absolute nah, that one is like behemoth in the entertainment industry, and it's just getting bigger all the time. But there's one specific Disney move which was predicted by The Simpsons long before it actually played out in the real world. During the episode When You Dish Upon a Star, Homer had the opportunity to interact with celebrities such as Alec Baldwin and Kim Basinger. And at one point, the 20th Century Fox logo is in plain view, but with a very interesting addition. Underneath the logo are the words, a division of Walt Disney Co. At the time, Fox operated independently from Disney, but that's no longer the case. This episode aired in 1998, and a couple of decades later, Disney actually did acquire Fox and its properties. Sure Since did. The Simpsons is part of the Fox Broadcasting Company, Disney doesn't have authority over the show outright, but it does own the production company behind the show, and now fans can binge old episodes on Disney+. Plus. Who could have seen this change happening other than The Simpsons themselves? Not only did the show make a prediction that turned out to be true but apparently it saw its own fate two decades into the future mm. Like the Simpsons, and they're just getting Futurama away uh, from the Fox part of it, right? They're still 20th the century. Industry over the years. We don't quite have talking celebrity heads in jars yet, but some aspects of the show's futuristic world have indeed come to fruition in the real world. Let's take a look at the episode Raging Bender, where the characters visit the set of All My Circuits, the movie. Not only do we get to see esteemed circuits. robot actor Calculon up close, but audience members will get to choose which course of action he takes during the film. Oh, this, this is like a futuristic concept at the time. That's not like that Netflix aired, movie. It's become much more mainstream. There are tons of choose your own adventure style video games now, including Telltale's popular titles, The Walking Dead and The Wolf Among Us. We also had the interactive Black Mirror yep. special Bandersnatch hey, released on Netflix. Did y'all like Bandersnatch? Let me know in the comment section. This style of show was considered revolutionary by people who clearly forgot that Future Almond did it first. Even though this style of storytelling made it into the real world, it remains to be seen whether it will become mainstream or remain a novelty. Interactive movies definitely sound awesome in theory, but they might take some time to catch on. Let's not forget that even major movie studios often struggle to get simple things right, like adapting one of the most popular and long-running Broadway musicals of all time. Yes, we are Cats. talking about the massive critical and financial did you see this movie? that was the Cats I did not see movie. this movie at all. Despite the fact that it was an adaptation of a beloved play featuring a celebrity cast and a $100 million budget, 100? most audience members couldn't stand it. And there's 
definitely a couple they of lost a lot of money on that we know would not have been fans <laughs> they lost a lot of money on that one <laughs> the quantity time episode of hey arnold air and seemed to predict this cinematic disaster arnold's not so secret admirer helga and her father went For to real. see a parody that of the play thirsty. cats appropriately titled rats and they weren't exactly fans they laughed through the entire thing and declared it the stupidest thing they'd ever seen when the cats movie premiered many hey arnold fans couldn't help but think that hey we've seen this somewhere before universal pictures could have saved a lot of money if they'd have taken a hint from this hey arnold episode they didn't want to clearly speaking of controversial creative decisions let's talk about the final season of game of thrones we know everyone is doing their best to forget it didn't happen, but let's take a look back for a moment. The show earned no shortage of fans because of its interesting characters, in-depth world building, and the many twists and turns I've never actually followed watched this show. over the years. And then we have season eight, where things got really unpredictable and not. I heard the last way. season was the worst season. The heroic Daenerys Targaryen, breaker of chains and mother of dragons, raising King's Landing to the ground atop Drogon. Well, apparently the writers of The Simpsons. The episode Surfsons puts the family in a fictional world similar to Westeros. It was clearly a Game of Thrones parody, and there's a scene in which the family watches helplessly as a dragon torches their village. Daenerys turning into the Mad Queen was definitely a surprise to most Game of Thrones viewers, but apparently the Simpsons saw it coming from a mile away. Mm. But perhaps the most impressive thing here is that this plot point worked just fine on the Simpsons, but did not go over so well with fans of Game of Thrones. <laughs> Now let's take a look at some non-fictional Never twists watched it, so. predicted by fictional shows. In the Futurama episode, The Lesser of Two Evils, we got to see a Miss Universe pageant. Even uh -oh. if you're not a fan of pageantry in real life, you have to admit that he in mess this up version, the names? they actually feature contestants from elsewhere in the universe. Has anyone else noticed that our version has a lot of contestants who are just from boring old Earth? Anyway, in the episode, Zap Brannigan calls out Leela's name instead of the actual winner. Oh. Then she's stripped of her flowers and crown, which are presented to the true winner, Miss Vega. Well, Four. there this you go. Scene is very that happened. Similar to what we saw play out on Steve stage. Steve definitely did that. When Steve Harvey hosted the event, he declared Miss Columbia to be the winner instead of the true victor, Miss Philippines. This was a horribly uncomfortable moment, but it felt familiar to fans of Futurama. <laughs> Futurama features tons of futuristic inventions, but the Simpsons Man, that had to so be much. rough. Well, I couldn't imagine usually, being her. There have been occasions in which the show features pieces of technology that didn't exist at the time, but that we take for granted now. Autocorrect might not seem futuristic, but let's not forget that it always hasn't been around to turn our strongly worded texts into messages about ducks. Back in 1994, <laughs> the Simpsons episode Lisa on Ice aired. During a school assembly, Dolph tries to make a memo of his Newton device, which would remind him to beat up Martin later on. But thanks to the device's autocorrect feature, it ended up saying eat up Martha instead. <laughs> so this was a joke which predicted that's, an important that's piece of actually tech, how I feel typing. had an even greater impact than most folks realize. Nitin Ganatra was Apple's engineer director who claims this episode was frequently referenced behind the scenes. Apparently, while working on the software used in the iPhone's keyboard, the team would frequently use the phrase, eat up Martha, to stress the importance of getting things just right. Even though autocorrect isn't always perfect, it seems like it's, an impossible concept. It's definitely of not ago. perfect. It annoys the heck Earlier, out of me. We mentioned that hover cars are standard. But without it, most of the time I wouldn't be able to spell the words I'd be trying to. Place in the future, but sometimes these scenes come way too early. In the Simpsons episode Future Drama, Bart and Lisa got to see what their lives would be like eight years in the future when they graduate from high school. Oh dang! It turns out that their parents finally separated after Homer spent all of their savings on an underwater house. Come on, is that really any worse than watching him drink away all the family's excess funds? Homer's underwater home might not have gone according to plan, <laughs> but at the very least, he does have a hover car, which is something many of us have dreamed of. But the problem here is it's that coming. this episode is supposed to take place in the year 2013. We're gonna all be falling and out the sky real soon. To say, we're a long ways away from zooming around in hover cars. Our Elon Musk will be the first to, to do drive it. Themselves, but they still have to make contact with the road, at least for now. Of course, there are a number of things in this vision of 2013 which definitely weren't true, including the US dollar being replaced by the Reagan. The deposit on this tux was 200 Reagans. And scientists. I mean, you could say it's Bitcoin. Magic. 
Futurama takes us past the year 2013 into 3000, even though we're not quite there yet. There are some aspects of the show too fantastical to ever take place. There are tons of celebrities featured on the show, or at least some parts of them. In the future, presented in Futurama, celebrities' heads were revived using special cloning technology. Not only are these clones physical copies, but they also retain the memories and mannerisms of the original humans. Except that this isn't at all how cloning technology works. First of all, long nope. gone folks like Abraham Lincoln wouldn't have enough DNA left to make any kind of clone at all. But even among newer stars, it wouldn't be possible to have their heads in jars like we see on Futurama. We can clone animals, but they don't have the same personalities or memories of the original. They might share DNA, but there's a lot more to people than their genetic makeup, and that won't change no matter how far into the future you look ahead. Mm. Over the years, The Simpsons have made a ton of predictions about the future that have turned out to be true. But there are some fans who give the show too much credit when it comes to being clairvoyant. When a fire broke out at the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris, a rumor started going around that this was one of the many events predicted by The Simpsons. An image even started making rounds on the internet which showed Mr. Burns standing in front of the Notre Dame of Springfield while it was engulfed in flames. Interestingly enough, this image is from an actual episode of the show, but it's been altered. The real scene is from the episode Husbands and Knives, where Marge starts up a woman's only gym I am and woman, hear me sweat. Her success. <laughs> we do see the Notre Dame Cathedral of That's Springfield, funny. but it's not on fire. And Mr. Burns isn't standing They gave him a fade. This scene was actually a parody of the Hunchback of Notre Dame and not a prediction of things to come. In this episode, Homer underwent surgery to alter his appearance and then gets chased by an angry mob, which is similar to what poor Quasimodo went through. Futurama <sighs> has introduced us to many different alien species, but there are plenty of native Earth-based creatures around as well. Somehow in the future, owls of all things have taken to plague the city of New York City. According to the show, by the time 2999 rolled around, owls had totally uh, it's still replaced time. rats as the it's primary still time. in the city. There are even owl exterminating services which deal with problems caused by these birds. Out of all the craziness of the show, this is honestly one of the most implausible aspects. Owls eat rodents, which means that if there are none in the city, owls wouldn't replace them, they would starve. It would have the exact opposite effect of owls taking over. In fact, some fans think this impossibility of owls infecting a city is exactly the point. This part of the show could be a parody of the book Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep by Philip K. Dick. In this what? story, owls That's a mouthful. cope with changes in their environment and become rare, if not outright extinct. It's possible that Futurama's owl problem was meant to illustrate what else do androids dream of electric sheep might have gotten wrong about the future. Let's take know. another look at the know. trip the Simpsons Ain't took nothing in the, off the table for your in the boy. episode Lisa's Ain't nothing Wedding. Off the table. Well, the future here is in 2010, but hey, the episode came out all the way back in 1995. Lisa visits a fortune teller at the Renaissance Fair, who predicts that she'll get engaged to a man named Hugh Parkfield. When Lisa travels to England in order to meet her future in-laws, we see that the iconic Big Ben has made the switch to digital. Clearly, since we are well past 2010 at this point, the Simpsons got this one wrong. Not only only that, but we highly doubt Big Ben would ever lose its iconic clock face in favor of a digital one since it's a cultural icon. In fact, it looked as better recently that way. as 2017, a restoration plan was put in place to preserve the clock. The chimes were silenced to allow for repairs, and the clock face was restored to its former state. The only modernization Big Ben is getting is a new elevator, not an entirely new method of telling time. <laughs> <laughs> That's messed up. Hey. That's messed up. <laughs> That's messed up. Which one of these that is messed predictions up. was your favorite? Are there any? Okay, so that was 10 times Cartoon saw into the future and called it right, and the 10 times they were wrong. Um, were there things in here that you guys wish that they would have added in here? Let me know in the comment section. Are there any other little parallels from TV shows that are happening today? Let's talk about it. You know, are you conspiracy theorists? Let's talk about that as well. Your boy. I try not to dig too deep into th certain things, but you read and you read and you read. And then after a while you go like, at the beginning you go, oh, this is bogus. And then by the end of it, you're like, well, this could be, this could be real. Like I'm one of those, man, I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? I'd be like, man, this might be fake, but then I start believing it. So I don't know. But um, if you guys enjoyed this reaction, give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below what you want to see me react to next. Follow me on my social media links are right there. Send me a message on any one of those. I get back with you as soon as possible. That's all I got for you. It's your boy, Billy, you so crazy. And I'm out this door.